everyone and welcome to this video on how to read a research article. Today we're going to be using this article, The Complexity of Father's Parenting Responsibilities and Involvement with Non-Resident Children by Manning, Stewart, and Smock as an exemplar of a research article in order to dissect it as a way to understand how to read a research article. And the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the title of this article. Many times what we want to know about an article can be found in the title. In fact, we can find what the independent variable and the dependent variable for this article are in this title. And that's usually the case for many research articles. So as we read this title, the complexity of father's parenting responsibilities and involvement with non-resident children, we see two concepts. First, we have the complexity of father's parenting responsibilities. Secondly, we have involvement with non-resident children. Those are our main concepts that our main independent and dependent variables will come from. So, in fact, the complexity of father's parenting responsibilities are the, uh, will be the independent variable <clears throat> or variables, and then involvement with their children is the outcome or the dependent variable. And when we read the abstract, this becomes clearer. So what does the abstract say? It says most policies that legislate father involvement with their non-resident children treat men as if they have obligations to only one set of children. So this is kind of giving a little bit of background information. Then it says this paper describes the complexity of non-resident father's parenting circumstances and then it assesses whether and how those parenting configurations are associated with the father's involvement with their non-resident children. So again, it's giving us a hint here that, whoops, it has two key pieces of information it's telling us. It's going to assess, wow, I need to learn how to use this highlight function. <laughs> it's going to assess whether and how these parenting configurations are associated with the father's involvement with their children. So the father's involvement with their children is the outcome, the dependent variable. And this, uh, these researchers want to know whether or not the father's parenting circles, which I want to do that, whether the parenting um, circumstances affect that involvement. And then the abstract usually, well, it does, not usually, it does give you the results. So they say that they find that fathers do often have parenting obligations both within and outside their current residences and that the complexity of these obligations does in fact or can result in less economic support and visitation with their non-resident children. So complexity it looks like the more complex the situation is for these non-resident fathers the less likely they are to be involved. Now, we don't know exactly at this point what they mean by involvement with their children. They go on to explain exactly how their variables were measured later. But at this point, we do know that they're looking at this concept in terms of an independent variable of complexity and how it affects this outcome of involvement, okay? Now, when we read a research article, the beginning is always an introduction. It always sets up the problem. And for social work, it's some kind of social problem. So there's statistics involved, there's um, a background section, sometimes they call it background, sometimes they don't, but it's always 
uh, and it, like I said, an introductory uh, scope of the problem. Um, and, and then there's often a, well, not often, there is a literature review. Before the authors get into the current investigation, before describing what they're doing. So before they get into what their study is about, they have to provide what is currently known about that problem in the literature or from the literature. So there is a literature review conducted. They may not call it a literature review. In this case, they're calling it a background. Okay. Oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah. There. <laughs> they're calling it a background. But see, they, they say past research identifies factors associated. Why do they do that? Because they have to know what factors affect their dependent variables. So they have to know what prior research has already found to affect the dependent variables that they're interested in because they have to try to include those dependent variables as much as they can. Why must they do that? Well, let's say that in this case they're interested in complexity, right, of relationships. And they do their study. And all they look at is complexity of relationships and involvement with children. And they find, lo and behold, that yes, the more complex the relationships are, the less involved the parents are. And they say, look, this is what we found. But they don't include any of these other variables that prior studies have found to be important. Well, all those other researchers could say, well, you didn't include these variables. How do you know that had you included them, that relationship would no longer be significant? We can't trust that that relationship you say exists actually exists. So that's why it's important to do the literature review, to see what prior studies have said are important variables that affect the outcome that we're interested in because we have to try to include those variables if we can. Okay, so so that's the, the front part of a research article. You have the title, you have the abstract, when the abstract which kind of gives you an overview of the entire article, and then you have this background literature review section. And then you get into the current investigation or, or the current study. And what researchers have to do in the current study is give all the procedures that they went through, pretty much everything they did step by step, in great detail, so that if any other person, any other researcher came along and said they wanted to do exactly the same thing, in other words, they wanted to replicate the same study, then they could because they basically have a blueprint of that study that they could follow. And that is why when you read research articles and you get to the, the method section, sometimes it's called method, sometimes it's called current investigation or what have you, um, it's very detailed. And that's the reason why. So in this section, you will have a number of subheadings usually. There's a sample section. There's usually a design section. There's a sometimes a procedures section, a variables section, and an analysis section. So let's see what sections this um, this uh, uh, da, 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 what, article <laughs> article has. So they have a data and method section. So yes, another section they may have is data. Um, sometimes that they call it data or design. Um, so in this in this section, they're describing the data that they used. 
so the how the data were collected. And in this case, this is a secondary data analysis. How do we know that? Because they say they use data from the NSFH. So since this is an acronym, that means that they, they spelled it out somewhere up here. So let's see if we can find where they spelled it out. So they say NSFH up here. So that means somewhere up here at some point, here we go. Drawing on the National Survey of Families and Households. Okay, so National Survey of Families and Households. So this is a survey that they did not do. This is a national survey that some other researchers conducted, and they are using it in a secondary analysis um, fashion, which is, which is great. It's great that that's available to them. So let's see. Oops, I went too far. So then it says that they used, so they used this, and then they describe, you know, the when the data was collected and that it's a national probability sample. So they're telling us that this is a really great sample because it was randomly selected. And if you recall back to the sampling uh, videos, and if you haven't watched the, the sampling videos, please do, you will know that uh, random sampling is the best kind of sampling because um, it ensures that the sample that is obtained is representative of the population it comes from. So then, um, let's see, they go into the sample size, right? So they, they discuss all the different sort of um, uh, steps that they went through to get the final, final sample of 424 non-resident fathers. And sometimes this happens. So they started out with 13,000 individuals but they weren't interested in all 13,000. They needed to, because again, this is, um, you know, this is, all, this is a survey of families, of all families, not just non-resident fathers. So they had to narrow down to non-resident fathers. And in that narrowing process, it turned out that there were only 424 that met their criteria. So, um, yeah, so, so they give us that information. They also give us the response rate. This is important information for us as a reader to know because typically um, surveys have a 50% response rate. So 74% is really high. So this tells us that th these data are really robust and give us confidence in this article's findings. Um, there are many things that give us confidence in, these artic in this article's findings. Um, for example, like I said, the fact that this is a probability sample, um, and now the fact that it's a 74% response rate. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so so this article did not separate out um, a section called sample, but other articles do. Every article is different, and it's not good or bad. It's just de it depends sometimes on the journal and the journal's preference. Um, but regardless of whether they call it sample or not, or they call it data or not, that information will be provided. Okay, dependent variables. There will always be a section called variables in some fashion. So here, the authors are telling us that they have two measures of father involvement. And what are those measures? Frequency of visitation, and whether any economic support was paid. So basically, how often they visit and whether they paid child support, okay? And here they have provided us a description of the characteristics of the non-resident fathers. Often, um, I would say 
almost all the time, if not every time, there will be a table such as this, usually table one, which is a descriptive table that describes the sample. So it's called usually description or descriptives, um, some, some term like that which provides, um, you know, percents, sometimes frequencies or numbers of all of the dependent and independent variables. So these are all of the variables that were included in this study. So frequency of visits in the past year was none several times in the past year, at least once per month. That's how it was measured. Paying any child support was just yes or no. And then we have these independent variables. And if we look here, we have the main independent variables that they're interested in, which are all of these. Oops. And then they have some control variables, like age of the child, gender of the child, mean distance from the child. All of these control variables are probably ones from the literature review that were found to be significant in other people's studies. Now these independent variables are the ones that they are interested in as they measure different aspects of the concept of complexity of relationships. Okay, oh here are some more control variables. And here, under independent variables, the authors describe all the ways in which the independent variables were measured. So they go into much greater detail as to how they measured those variables. And then recall I mentioned how there's an analysis section. This is where they describe the type of analysis that was used. Um, most often, the most often type of analysis that is used is some form of regression. Um, usually it's multiple regression or logistic regression when it comes to um, social work research, but there are other forms of regressions that are used. Uh, I would refer to the statistics guide that I provided in class. Okay, and then we have the results section. So the results section is different from the findings section or sometimes findings is called discussion or summary and conclusion or discussion and conclusion. The results are presented just very matter of fact with no interpretation, just sort of here's the results and that's it, okay? And um, the sometimes we're given multiple tables and usually what I do is I kind of skip to the final table just to see what the final results were. So in this one, we see that they did a logistic regression um, and this was on frequency of visitation and payment of child support. So here's visitation and here's uh, child support. So um, let's see, sometimes you'll have different models and a good sort of tip is to always go with whatever the last model is or the anything that says full or what have you. Now, how do you read a model like this when you have like negatives and these stars? Well, the stars represent a relationship between two variables that's significant. And that's what we, what we want to pay attention to. So what do these p-values represent? Well, P stands for probability. And the way I like to explain this is it's sort of the probability or the chance that we're taking that we're saying a relationship exists 
a real relationship exists when it doesn't. So, for example, here, let's just take this one right here. Okay? These authors are saying that a relationship exists between parenting complexity and visitation such that the more complex a relationship is, the less likely the visitation. And they're saying that that's a significant relationship. They give it two stars. Two stars is at the P05 level, right? P less than 0.05. They're willing to take a 5% chance that they're wrong. Okay? Actually, they're saying that the more simple the relationship, the more likely the visitation. But that's basically what I said before. Okay? So, but they're willing to take a 5% chance that they're wrong. Okay? Now, how would we read this one? It has a little negative here, right? So this is age. And age gets, goes, from small, uh, goes from young to old, right? So we would say, and this is for, you know, going from no visit to visit, right? So the older the child, the less likely the visitation because it's a negative relationship. The older the child, the less likely the visitation. The older the child, the less likely payment of child support. In this case, the older the child, the less likely the visitation has four stars. That means the authors are willing to say that this is a real relationship and they're willing to say that it, and, and take a less than a 1% chance. So th that's that's a pretty, you know, Less than a 1% chance? Okay. Yeah, I'm willing to believe them. Okay? But that's how you read these. Okay? So, let's read one that has a, 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 a positive here. Okay. So, education of the child. If the child... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Characteristics of the non-resident father. If the non-resident father has 16 years or more education, they are more likely to pay child support compared to those fathers who only have um, high school education. Okay? If you don't feel comfortable reading the table, you don't have to. They go over those results here in narrative format under multivariate results. Now, then, I'm just going to skip over here, then they have a discussion section, and as I said, sometimes that's called discussion, sometimes it's called summary, sometimes it's called summary and discussion, summary and conclusion, discussion and conclusion. <laughs> There's always some something here, and in this case, now this is where they discuss those results and tie it back to the literature that they reviewed earlier. And then at the end, there's always a references section so that if you are doing your own literature review, then you can go to their references to see what articles they cited. Okay, so I hope that you found that this was helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.